Hello, thanks a lot, Geneva Environment Network, for giving me this uh, opportunity to present some uh, insights and some updates on the current state of Swiss glaciers under climate change. My name is uh, Matthias Hus. I'm working at the ETH Zurich and the Federal Institute for Forest, Snow and Landscape Research in Wilmersdorf. And I'm the head of uh, the Glacier Monitoring in Switzerland program, LAMOS. So in this short presentation, I'd like to uh, introduce you in the top, into the topic of glaciers and how they are evolving in Switzerland in the last century and the last years, and also giving some outlook um, for the next decades, how glaciers are going to behave when climate is continuing to change. So glaciers are beautiful, as you know, and they visualize climate change in a very um, visual way, in a very clear way. So there's something like a huge um, instrument that tells people that something is going on much more uh, clearly and more visually than uh, a graph of temperature change could do it. But glaciers are also important because they deliver water for irrigation, for example, but also for hydropower production, especially during the summer months, the water from glaciers is very important in the Alps, but also worldwide. Glaciers, however, are also dangerous. They are a source of natural hazards. They cause landslides, floods, and avalanches. Glaciers are also alive. They flow and uh, their changes and movement is uh, very impressive and uh, raises the awareness that uh, nature is dynamic environment. Glaciers change in a fast way. So these are comparison images of uh, Great Aletsch Glacier, the biggest glacier in the European Alps over the last um, 70 years. And you can see a huge change in ice volume, uh, decrease in ice surface elevation. Um, within two generations. However, changes can also be much faster. This is the disappearance of a small glacier in eastern Switzerland, Pizzol Glacier in 2006, and here in 2018. You see within this one single decade, the glacier has almost completely disappeared. And rocks are taking over now, the landscape changes from white to dark and gray. These are changes that are going on everywhere in the Alps and that are actually accelerating. How do we observe these uh, changes in glaciers? So as I said, I'm the head of the Swiss Glacier Monitoring Network, Glacier Monitoring Switzerland with LAMOS. We are uh, financed by several federal institutions and our goal is to document and observe uh, several variables of glacial change. These variables have been measured partly since more than 100 years. So we continue this long-term series and analyze data uh, to provide uh, monitoring products and insights into their changes. These data series, these long data series will support process understanding and also the modeling of future glacial changes. For example, we measure the change in ice thickness or the melting of the ice surface. We do these measurements at the uh, poles drilled into the ice, as we can see it here. Um, here we see the installation of one of these uh, poles on the um, Concordia Platz on Great Aletsch Glacier, top of the thickest ice in the Alps. This is another um, aspect of one of these poles to measure melting. So we'll put these poles into the ice and measure how much ice is melting at this position. Um, just for example here, we expect about the uh, height of this pole to be melting during one single year. So these melt rates are really impressive and they are fast. 
we're not only measuring how the glaciers are melting in thickness, but also how the glacial length is changing. So how the position of the glacier snout is changing over time. These measurements are um, relatively easy to acquire, but they are uh, very long and have been performed at many glaciers in Switzerland. Differently to the same change in climate. So the biggest glacier, Great Alledge Glacier, is retreating a very steady state uh, continuously um, and has lost more than three kilometer in length over the last uh, 130 years, whereas uh, smaller glaciers are partly also advancing, for example, in the 1970s or 80s in response to short periods of more favorable climate conditions. This shows that glacial length is not a direct indicator and we more need to look at the changes in glacier volume or the so-called glacier mass bubbles. This is a figure directly based on our monitoring results um, documenting the change in overall ice volume in Switzerland since the year 2000. So we have gone down from, from almost 80 kilometers cube of ice to about 50, 55 at present. So nowadays in Switzerland, we have um, 50 kilometer cube of ice, which means 50 uh, blocks of ice with one kilometer side length. So these changes are really fast and we see that uh, only in the last 10 years, we have lost about one fifth of the total ice volume in Switzerland. If we look at this at an annual scale, we see that in many years, the red ones, we are, we are losing more than 2% of the remaining ice volume. We can also see that the frequency of these extreme years is accelerating. So the last four years up to 2020 have all been years with more than 2% of the loss of the remaining ice. And there has not been a single year with a gain in glacial volume since 2001. We also perform uh, real-time observations documenting how the glacier is uh, behaving right now. These are these real-time cameras that observe a stake melting out of the ice and you can actually see almost the glacier breathing with more melting during daytime and then less melting during nighttime. So these data sets document how the glacier is going right now. If we look at the present state in July 2021, the state of the glacier is quite okay in comparison to other years um, because there has been a lot of snow in winter and the melting has been relatively snow, slow so far. But we will see by the end of September if this will by, finally be a somewhat better year for the glaciers. Let's look into the future. How um, are glaciers in Switzerland going to evolve in the next centuries. This is a model result again of Great Alledge Glacier. We see this beautiful big tongue of the glacier and how it is likely going to change over the next uh, 80 years. We see that um, there is going to be a massive glacial retreat. The landscape is going to change completely. New glacial lakes are going to appear by the end of the century, there is still some ice left in the upper part, but the glacier is not connected anymore. However, the famous uh, Jungfraujoch railway station is still um, at the foot of the glacier under this uh, median climate scenario. If we look at such a scenario for all glaciers in the Alps, we see that uh, we might lose up to 90% of the total ice volume, and only the biggest glaciers might survive. Is there um, some po a possibility to, to act against these drastic changes? We see on the left um, a model result if no actions to protect climate are taken. In that case, we will see an almost complete disappearance of all ice in the Alps. Whereas on the right, we see um, a result based on strong mitigation of climate change. So basically, 
following the Paris Agreement at a global scale. Also in that, uh, that case, we see that um, glacial retreat is going to be massive, but still a part of the ice is going to be retained and also the impacts are um, moderated and less extreme. So there is still a uh, potential to change something, to keep some glaciers, to um, show them to our kids and, and grandkids, but still um, a lot of the uh, ice loss is already committed and will happen in any case here in the Alps. Whereas at the global scale, more ice could be saved with strong climate change mitigation efforts. Every time I see these model results, I can barely believe that this is true, that we can uh, lose and make such a huge glacier disappear completely within a short time period of only 80 years. But then when I see the difference between 2005 and 2019, when we see such a big change in a time period of only 40 years, then these model results become credible and we have to prepare ourselves for the complete loss of all time glaciers. Can we do something about it artificially? Um, there are some efforts to cover glaciers with white blankets as shown here on this image of Rhone Glacier. These uh, efforts are done since uh, a few years or more than a decade partly to save glacier ice locally for example, in connection to ski resorts or here in connection to uh, tourism, to touristic ice caves. So this, um, these um, measures are really efficient. They reduce melt by up to 50%, but they're only applicable and efficient at local scale. To a total glacier. There is another project in uh, Eastern Switzerland where um, they want to produce artificial snow to reduce glacier melt. Um, so this is a picture of the glacier in 2020 and a uh, model result in 2060 without artificial interaction. So in that case, we see also a strong glacier change. However, with um, artificial snow production, part of the glacier that we see down here in the middle could be made um, bit thicker, the retreat could be slowed down. So this is, is an interesting technology, also applicable to bigger glaciers. However, it is not efficient enough to save an entire glacier and of course also not to save all glaciers in Switzerland. So let me sum up with some uh, key messages. So the glaciers are a very visual manifestation of climate change and they show how the beauty of mountains is at stake. Most glaciers are likely to, to disappear until 2100, especially the small ones. But with strong climate change mitigation efforts, we could save up to 40% of the ice volume in Switzerland. The glacier retreat has major impacts on hydrology, water resources, hydropower, natural hazards, and also tourism. Else. And I've also shown that these artificial measures um, are locally efficient, but they're not able to save an entire glacier. So the only way to save our glaciers is to um, protect climate and to limit temperature warming in the next decade. 